In the new update of Lumen REI, perhaps the biggest addition is the addition of reflections. So as you can see, I've already got an image set up waiting on reflections to be added. This image is not edited. It's a straight NEF file from a Nikon D800. It was taken a few years ago, back in 2017. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you just how the reflections work with images. In this case, this one here. So what I'm going to do is for this, I'm just going to go to Adobe Standard for this one. And perhaps I'll tweak it ever so slightly. Uh, I'll add a tiny bit of structure and I'll just do this very quickly just to let you see everything happening. Uh, I'm not going to play around with this image too much because the main focus of this is the reflections. I'm going to add the colour, I'll push the saturation just slightly and I'll push the vibrance ever so slightly. It's not something that I normally do with images but let's get on with it. Let's get into sky. And we have sky selection. And if you get into sky selection, I'll take this out of custom because it's custom where I'm going to go. And we've got all these different skies here. So if I choose that one there, it will drop in. And as you can see, the reflection down here. For this though, the tonality of this and the colors of this, they don't work together. So I'm going to go back and as you can see, if I get into all skies, I've got blue sky, bright sky, dramatic sky, dramatic sunset, galaxy, starry night, sunset. So let's just go for a dramatic sunset here. And it gives me this option here broken down. I am going to take that one there and it will overlay that. So straight away, you can see that that has dropped in here and it's added the reflections into the water here. So if I take that back up there, we have the usual drop down menus, just close them down. And I'm going to get into reflection here. And I now can adjust the reflection amount from this. Now I could go to 100%, which is way too much, as reflections are normally always darker than the actual image or the source emitting the light anyway. So let's just go in and pull that back to there just to show you how it works. We also can go back in to relight the scene and we can pull that back and I can see it updating here. I'm working for a PC from a PC with this and then I can update it there and that's it updated. So I'm going to leave it at that so that we can delve further into the reflections of this. So perhaps you're wondering if this will work with your own skies and create a reflection based on your own skies? The answer is yes, it will. So if I go in here and you can see the drop down menu, if I go down to custom, now I've already loaded skies into this, but I'll show you how to bring them in. That one there's not a sky, that's a JPEG as you can see, but I've, this is the my own sky that I've created. How you add more to this, and then go into the folder where your sky is located and in this case it's sunset sky i'm not going to click open i'm just going to click cancel because it's already loaded in here if i click that once it changes and you can see automatically the reflections change with it as well so this can be done you can add a full array of your own skies and the reflections will be added using that as well if you have a person in your foreground it will actually read the person and it will relight them based on the rest of the image and the scene that you can see in front of you. So I can push the reflection amount here, take it up, take it down, that's just too much. So I am going to go for a bit of that for this image. And as I said, you can add any of your own skies. So that sky that I added, it was from another photograph and what I did was I chopped it at the horizon line so that it came in. So that's great. You can see what it can do. It can add reflections. Let's go into orientation. So in orientation, we have rotation, which is something previous versions didn't have. So if you've got maybe a dynamic shot where the horizon line is off and you need to add a sky in there, it was very difficult trying to match that up. But now it can actually do it. I don't have an image like that, but I'm just going to show you the rotation and how it works. So you can see that that will rotate in either direction. So 
what I'm going to do is reset that so that it stays in the middle because there's something else it can do as well. Same as before, we had horizon blending. So we can blend the horizon up through here and we can take it away there. We can also go into sky adjustments, add atmospheric haze, which softens the sky there. Right, I'm just going to put that back at its default and leave it there. The software now also has a horizontal offset and I'll show you that working. So if I take the sky that way, you'll notice the reflections move with it. And I can take the sky in the opposite direction and again you'll notice the reflections move with it. Now if you're planning and adding skies into your images and creating the reflections this is a massive time saver for you so hopefully you'll get everything out of this to allow you to do that to work at various angles to add any sky you want and if there's water in it create that reflection Okay, another feature that I would like to draw your attention to with it is the fact that you can add PNG files to this now and you don't have to mask them out. So if you have a, a library of preset PNG, pre-saved PNG files, you can add them to your images. You can add up to 10 of them and just keep overlaying and overlaying and overlaying them. So what I'm going to do is run through a relatively quick edit in a systematic thought process for my head uh, so that you can have fun playing around with the software as well. So let's go and add a sky to this and just have fun with it. So I'm going to get, I'm going to go for that sky there, Dramatic Sky 3. And as my horizon is running off, let's adjust the horizon as well. So let's take the rotation and tilt it up just slightly to there. That seems to be working okay for this. And then let's offset the horizon. Now, there's a couple of things you have to be careful of when you're doing this. You have to look for contrasty areas. For example, in here, does that contrast with the background? What happens up here? What happens here? We can adjust that later, but to start with, we'll just look at it just now. So let's just go through this until I find an area that I am quite happy with. And I'm going to go for that with this. I'm also going to add, I don't need a reflection here at all. So I'm also going to add some atmospheric haze to this. And remember, we're only trying to play with the image. We're only having fun with this. So let's, that's us added the skies. Let's go in for a quick edit. And I'll just click there and then I'll go up to light and I'll pull the exposure back slightly, just ever so slightly. Pull the highlights back, not too much though, might even push the highlights, leave them there, bring the shadows back, too dark, lift the shadows a bit, there, we'll go for that. Because the main thing here I want to show you adding the PNG files and how they come in. So if I go in here and go to add and if I go into add text now I'm only going to add a couple if I go through this you'll get the idea after the first or second one so I'm only going to show you a couple for this so if I quit load text and then I go into dragons and let's take a dragon flying so I'll double click that and let's just take this chap here so if I quick open the dragon will drop in there and as you see already the opacity is down at 50% so if I take that up to 100, you can see that drops in and he's a bit big for the screen there. So let's go into advanced settings. You can see everything else is there. But what I can do now is I can go place texture and I can scale them down for this scene. So I'm going to take them over there. I'll just place them in the sky there. That'll do fine. And we'll drop that guy there and then I'll just uncheck place texture. What we're going to do is we're going to blend the dragon into the sky. A thing to think about is the fact that if you're trying to blend an object from another image into one image, use the colours that are there. So for example, if I turn the opacity of this dragon down, the background colours will begin to show through, which means it will apply it to that dragon. 
where the colours are just coming through and no more. Right, I can also pull back the contrast because he's in the distance. Take the brightness down a bit as well. Also going to pull the saturation back as well. I'm going to pull that back to around about there. Does it send them into the distance? Not exactly at the moment, but we'll deal with that because what I'm trying to do is think about how we build the image up via different textures. So I'm quite happy there. What I would then do is close that, go into edit. So now I'm going to jump into atmosphere and what I'm going to do is I'll try the fog. Let's just try a little bit of fog in this. And that softens the dragon once again. Quite happy with that to be honest just for the purposes of this demonstration. So we now have to put a foreground element in. So let's go back into local masking and let's go add texture wood texture and let's go back up one level and get into the dragon standing so we now have to choose what dragon we're going to have in the foreground and for me i think i'm going to choose this chap here click open so you can see the size that that drops in and also the opacity of it and i don't want the background element showing through the dragon so I'm going to push the opacity to get to a point where I lose the background elements but at the same time allow the colours from the background to slightly show through. That there looks okay. So I'm now going to get into place texture and I'm going to take it down in size slightly. I want this chart to be quite big in the scene. But as you see if I move that through there you will notice that this bush in the background shows through. And that for me is actually fine. I can take him off the scene there slightly. And let's just leave him at that. And I'll close place texture, go into advanced settings. I'm going to also drop the saturation. Not too much with this one, but just to kind of match everything that's going on here. You'll notice that because of this dragon here, there is a cut off at the edge. I'll show you how to get rid of that. If I get into the eraser tool, Opacity at 50%, take the brush size down, and just paint. I am just clicking there, and that helps that blend away. So if you're building up this type of composite imagery with Thin Luminar AI, what you have to do is think of background to foreground elements. You can't put them in and then swap them around. So you have to think about how you're going to place everything and then you're committed to it without resetting it, but you're committed to how you place it there. So think carefully about your composition if you're having fun and doing this. For example, if I add another texture in and I'm just going to add Defiance in here, and as you see, if I wanted this dragon behind him, which probably would have worked better, what I would have to do is replace different textures. I'll show you how quickly you can do that though. So if I push the opacity of this one here and I bring him to around there and then I get back into my textures. So this texture here is the second one. This one here is the first one, second, and that's the one we just added. So it works from back to foreground. So if I close that, it disappears. I then want to get back in. That's the background, always that one. I then want to get back in and I want to pull the saturation of this guy down. So I'm going to pull the saturation back just to around about, see there. Now that alone works better than the original dragon, but I want to show you what happens when you add a new one. So I'm going to do that. Add wood texture and let's find stair again. So let's open that. And you'll see that stair drops in on top. So I'm going to push the opacity to around there. I'm then going to place the texture. Drag it. I missed that there. Drag it down in size. Move it across to where I think it should be. Now compositionally this is terrible but Hopefully it gives you the idea of what's going on. So I'm going to leave that guy there and then I'm just going to close the place texture and close down the saturation. 
I've, I can also move this around and if I want to blend some of the grass in, what I can do is I can take the opacity back down, take the size of the brush down and just start erasing in there. And that will allow some of the grass to cover, for example, the claws and toes in this case. Now that you've created this, you want to add your signature to it, you want to add your watermark to it. So let's go in. We've added a new one. As you see, we've got the three dragons here. Let's go to load texture. And if I go to my desktop, which is here, where are we? Desktop, new signature copy, open. That drops in. We now go place texture. And I'm going to move that to the side. As you can see, this is a very high resolution texture. So it's quite large when it comes to this. So what I'm going to do is drag that down in size as quick as I possibly can. And I'll just leave that there. Again, I can rotate it. I can do whatever I want with it. Uh, and I can turn the opacity up or turn the opacity down. So that lets you see how to add your signature or watermark to any of your images as well. Hopefully you got something from that and hopefully by the first time I did it, you understood exactly what you needed to do to get to the final result. As, as you know, these are not final images by any means at all. I just wanted to cover the reflections and then for this final image that you see on screen now, just how to think about using PNGs when you're actually building up composites or composite imagery. So if you've created a PNG watermark, you can now stamp your images with that as well. Thanks again for watching. Remember, stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.